My name is George Carvus. I live in La Hinge, County Clare, west coast of Ireland. I'm a wild ocean photographer and focus on seascapes, landscapes, wildlife, big waves and all the stuff which I like about the ocean. I don't use artificial lights, I work with a natural light and I always wait for the right conditions. It's a combination of good planning, predictions and luck as well. So good morning, we are at uh, the west coast of Ireland, County Clare, a beautiful place called Boathouse or Green Island. It's 6.30 in the morning, it's beautiful sunrise. I'm hoping to catch some beautiful early morning light on the seascape. I'm here with Nikon Z7 II, 2470. In my backpack it's also 1424, two amazing lenses for landscapes. I'm shooting handheld today, I don't need any long exposures. I'm in manual mode, I have shutter speed 80 which is fast enough to shoot handheld and I'm on f8 just to have uh, everything nice and sharp, nice big depth of field. I leave the ISO on auto, I just want to make sure the ISO doesn't climb over 1000 or 2000 because I, I want to have my landscape photo pretty crisp. As a landscape photographer, you always work with light and the light is precious, especially here in Ireland. It can go very quickly, it can just come from behind the cloud and you have only a few minutes to get your shot. So it's very crucial to be flexible to get what you need in time. I'm shooting shutter speed something between 40 and 80 today with the amazing IBIS image stabilization in uh, uh, Nikon Z7 II and Z6 II. I can still shoot pretty sharp pictures even in slow shutter speed. That gives me amazing freedom of shooting handheld and be kind of free not to carry on my tripod. So handheld photography could be really handy if you don't need slow shutter speed like blurry sea or blurry sky. sun climbed a little bit higher, we lost the, the morning magic light and we are on this beautiful green island. Took a couple of pictures of my dog Sky. she was really playful on this bouncy grass and it was great to just adjust my camera for uh, this kind of action so I put my shutter speed to 1500 and um, F number somewhere around 6 to 8 and because the sun is really nice behind it, can provide nice sun rays. So that's why I wanted to get a little bit higher F number, just to get this lovely sun rays into the picture. And uh, yeah, I put the animal eye detection, it works really well. If you're taking pictures of a small animal, you have to go down on their eye level. It's so important. The biggest mistake people do when they're photographing animals, they just standing high. You can lie down or you can just tilt the LCD screen and go really low and then you're getting really good shots. I'm shooting now 1424, which is amazing wide-angle lens from Nikon. It's uh, much lighter, much more portable than the previous model. It's super sharp. It, it's actually focusing so fast on dog's eye, even when the dog is pretty small in the frame. I love to take pictures of my dog. She's so pretty. With Irish landscapes, she looks amazing and sometimes she does those crazy things, she's still like a puppy. You can capture those amazing moments. I think the flexibility is so important, you just go out and if you have no expectations, that's the best way, so you never get disappointed. So it's good to be ready for your best shot. But if nature not provides, it's good to adjust to the given situation and if we don't have a cloud, if we don't have a light, I take a couple of portrait lenses with me and actually starting taking pictures of people in the nature was an amazing move in my photography last few years and I can use my amazing shallow depth of field lenses like 50, 1.2, 105, 1.4 and yeah, it's kind of next level for me. My work is pretty solitary, so occasionally I love to 
go with people on beautiful places and do portraits in nature, especially in low lights, sunrises, sunsets. And I take advantage of my knowledge from landscapes. So now we are at the Cliffs of Moher, majestic Cliffs of Moher. We have beautiful evening light. I have my um, Nikon Z7 II set up with uh, amazing prime lens 50mm 1.2 which has a beautiful shallow depth of field, beautiful bokeh. So we're gonna take advantage of this lens, we're gonna set it up for f1.2. We have plenty of light so I have to go really high with shutter speed. This moment I'm on 8000 with shutter speed and my ISO still go around 120. So yeah, that's how light this lens is. For portraits, I really like to use my LCD panel instead of viewfinder. I found it really handy, really easy to find the right composition and framing people. Also, good composition can be anywhere two meters above you or one meter under your camera. So walk around, don't be afraid to lie down on the ground, don't be afraid to run a little bit higher. For now I don't have too many clouds to frame the top of my shot, so I do the framing with the end part of the cliffs and I'm placing uh, my two models into the sea area and they will be framed by the cliffs and the grass. That's my shot for now. We have to be really careful when you shoot 1.2 that focusing is spot on because if not you will see it straight away. Also when you shoot 1.2 it's very tricky if you have more than one person in the shot so you just have to make sure they're on the same distance from the lens otherwise you're gonna have always somebody not in focus. My setup for now is Z7 II with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. I love this lens, it's such an amazing zoom. There's so many situations I use this lens for. There are 2.8, so they create beautiful bokeh as well. You can bring the background very easily to zoom in to 200. And also for now, I gonna take advantage of this lens and maybe bring the cliffs behind me closer. I try to frame the nice black line of the clouds into the shot and maybe even 12 pins of Konema around the back. Another reason um, we like to shoot portraits with a more kind of telephoto lens is human faces look better when you, when you zoom in. Sometimes I even use 300mm for the portraits. So yeah, they are, they are brilliant. If you set up your composition well and the background has nice colors, nice texture, nice bokeh, it looks fantastic. Another reason to use 70 to 200, you can step out from their comfort zone and so they feel kind of more free in front of the lens and yeah, you're still getting uh, amazing shots. I feel the, the lens is a little bit too big, a little bit too shaky to photograph through the LCD. I need to be more steady and um, when I look into the viewfinder, I feel like I have this kind of steady, steady rock position. If I want to capture people and landscapes behind, you have to make a decision if you want to isolate people's faces, so shallow depth of field, or you want to capture entire scenes nice and sharp. That's kind of a critical decision. So often, if the landscapes are amazing and there is beautiful background, I should pick F number, F number around eight, eight, nine, just to have everything sharp. Times when I go tighter with the lens, let's say 50 mil or 85 mil. I kind of isolate the background and move around just to make sure my background is amazing but it's not sharp so I'm just focusing on people's faces and getting shallow depth of field and a beautiful background. Make sure the, the colors in the background are amazing because the bokeh only can be good when you choose the right background. We are at the top of the Cliffs of Moher here. It's probably the most beautiful place I've ever been in my life. I've been here a thousand times and every time I come here I take a different picture. Even after 17 years of shooting here I'm still feeling inspired. I'm gonna use that lovely seeping which is growing here on the edge to compose 
this beautiful scenery into my frame and when the entire cliffs and the seeping are lit by sunset, yeah, then we get a shot. We are here with the Z7 II, 14 to 24, which is amazing, brand new lens from Nikon. I trust the camera's IBIS, so I'm very steady here, so I put my shutter speed handheld for 60, F number nine. I'm gonna focus on the one third of the cliff. The seeping will be slightly not that, that sharp, and uh, that's fine for me in this situation. We don't have many clouds on the horizon, so I only give the sky, let's say, one fourth of the picture. Yeah, that's my composition. Ideally, I would love to have some clouds to frame on top of my frame, which we don't have. It's a blue sky. Some people love blue sky. I love it during the day, but uh, when I'm shooting on the evening, I, I like to have some clouds to frame. If the sky is too blue, there's no clouds to frame. Don't give sky too much space. So for this shot, I would love to take the rock which is sticking out on the top of the cliff as my framing on top of my picture and uh, on foreground there will be this lovely seeping. I think the most common mistakes what beginners do, they come to this beautiful place, they got stunned by beautiful landscapes and uh, they just straight away start photographing without even thinking to put uh, something on the foreground, something on the background without the framing with the, with the clouds. So it's a, it's a very important thing like that all the time. The framing is so, so crucial, especially these days when the cameras are so good and your exposure is always good. Even if you shoot automatic, your focusing can be pretty easy. So it's really up to our creativity which comes from the framing. Never stay on one spot, even if you think you're nailing it. It's always good to get up and check other spots around because, yeah, you might be surprised the, the amazing composition is only like um, two, three meters away from you. So, yeah, just go around and check how, how the entire scene looks through the lens. In many people's ideas, landscape has to be taken from tripod and they come with their tripod, they have a great gear and they set up the tripod and um, start snapping pictures. But what I always recommend, if you want to shoot with tripod, before you set up, walk around the scene, find your composition, and then you can set up the tripod. That's where the mirror lasses are amazing. You just turn on your LCD. You pretty much see on your LCD the final image. Then when you find the, your happy spot, then you can set up your tripod. Okay, the light is perfect. With my setup, um, 60 shutter speed, f9, I'm getting um, 250 uh, ISO, which is just perfect. So we don't really need a tripod. I like to use 2470 because it's such a useful lens. 24 in most of the situations can be good. Sometimes when the sky goes really beautiful and you got those white sky, amazing colors or amazing cloud structures, you really want to switch to 1424. Lots of people tend to kind of shooting long exposure all the time, but sometimes there is no benefit out of it, especially if you have a nice structure in the clouds and you take long exposure, you destroy that structure. The, the clouds get too blurry and doesn't look good. So those are kind of important factors which you have to consider. If we're really close to the water, it's nice to have this blurry effect on the sea. So that's the great way to using um, long exposures. But even here on the cliffs of Mohor, the sea is pretty calm. Only reason I would use the long exposure today would be to achieve my ISO lowest as possible and a super steady sharp shot. But if the light is good, I don't have to really put it on tripod. After 17 years, my love for photography still go on. I've been always super psyched about taking different photos, difficult photos. I always striving to get amazing angles, amazing lighting conditions. Something what separate my pictures from others. To capture some special beauty and that's really what I focus on. 
Many landscape photographers think that they need to travel all over the world to get a great shot. Sometimes by keep visiting those places on your doorstep at many different times and different weather conditions, you can get really great shots. I spent so much time going to the same places and still getting different images, trying different compositions, lenses and settings. 